Hello and welcome to another episode of All About Art from E and S Gallery. I'm Walter. And I'm Kathy. And if you are listening, art really does speak to you. So we have a special guest coming up. And if you would like to see who it is, stay tuned and we'll be right back. Ladies, it's happening. We're getting framed. What's that? Oh, no, no, ma'am. Let's try again. We need one fit for a queen. Positive vibes, ladies. Wait for it. I think she may have it. Oh, yes. Can you feel it? Can you feel it? Leroy Campbell is a self-taught collage artist that utilizes paper and other found objects in combination with acrylic paint to create inspirational works of art. Born in Charleston, South Carolina and raised in New York City, his works take a critical view of social, political and cultural issues related to African Americans. His newspaper series evolved out of an earlier body of work and portray stylized images from a contemporary perspective. The newspapers selected for his paintings are also a critical part of black history as he selects articles and stories with important messages that are relevant today. Hey guys, welcome back. And as we said before, we have our special guest with us today. Yeah, that dude that lives in Atlanta now. Uh huh. Yeah, his name is Leroy, Leroy Campbell. Campbell. What's up, Leroy? Yes, yes, I like the way that feels and the way that sounds. I am fine. I bring light and love to you. I'm doing great, man. What's up, Kathy and Walter? How you doing, my friend? You know, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in a good place right now, man. I'm in heaven. You know, I'm, I'm fasting from the world uh, negativity. I'm writing a book. I'm creating. So I'm in a good place, man. I'm working out. I know you want to look like your boy. That's all good, though. Yeah. <laughs> so you just got back from the motherland. You want to share a little bit about to that? Ghana, where is where I went, mm -hmm. and it was very very powerful because you know beyond the return they have a lot of ancestral sites that you can attend. It's very educational. It reminds us of who we are. Mm. We just had a ball, man. We slept on the beach and wow. so I just jumped off when the opportunity presented itself. I jumped off the bus and I ran into one of the villages 
and I took some beautiful pictures with some of the students. Oh, well, I I'm, I'm can't wait to see the body of work that's going to result. They did give me an African name, born on Sunday. My name was Kwesi, Kwesi Ase. You so that's you, Q -U -A -S -I. I'm, I'm going to put this in an upcoming email blast. Kwesi. My name it just means born on Sunday. I'm, I'm so glad you made it over there and back safely and welcome home. You are one of our most popular artists. And uh, we just finished sharing information about how art speaks to you. So with that in mind, um, you're, you're perfect because your aesthetic addresses that. Share with us why your people have no eyes. The main reasons why is because I developed this style where you only see the mouths on the characters and they, that became a signature style that identifies Leroy Campbell. But more interactively speaking, you know, I put a lot of articles and quotes and newspapers in my work. Right. So marrying the two made it really like it gave the characters a way of speaking and sharing that information. So it, it allows for the viewer to be have an interactive relationship with not only the character, but really hear the message. I mean, that's, the, that's one of the underpinning purpose for that. You know, you've been working your, uh, your craft uh, a lot of years. What gets you up in the morning to come and create? Well, I'm a community culture person. You know, I was born and raised in Charleston. You know, everybody was, you know, everybody had a work ethics and, you know, everybody was going to, to school or going to church or was expected to be made, something made of themselves. So I have dedicated my life to, to not to that work ethics. But then, you know, when I actually started reading about my history, about my people's journey. And I learned that ever since we stepped off the plantation, every institution, every system that was put in place was designed to impede our progress. Then I became an activist. I became an activist to help us come, overcome those hurdles, fight against that. And then when I realized that some of these, some of these impediments were really like really designed to destroy our spirit, and I know our spirit was a birthright that we were born with. I decided to be an advocate to fight to make sure that our people's spirits stay strong. Okay. Wow. I get up every day making sure that whatever I can do to keep our people's spirit edified and strong, to me, that's the most, that's where my fire is right now. All right, all right. Well, and it's evident in your work because mm. it, it is highly motiv motivational and it's almost like it gives you energy when you're looking at the work. I agree 100%. So are you working on anything in particular right now? Uh, absolutely. Um, I, I started working on a couple of pieces, uh, more community-driven, community center. So I've been working on a series called the Book Smart Series. And uh, I have to thank you guys, because you guys have been successful at you know selling them and, make, and exposing them. But I'm extending that series. I got a piece behind me it's called the bookmobiles. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so you can see the mobile itself, and I have some characters that I'm going to add some children you're going to see uh, at the mobile. Um, so I'm working on that series. I'm working on a lot of larger pieces that will show more community involvement, more interaction between with us and our community, us and our community interacting with each other. I think, that, I think our salvation is always dependent on our unity, and the way you have unity is you have to be involved physically in your community. So I want to do a line of work that will depict and show and be an advocate of just that. I'm excited and looking forward to it. That's a great, that's great. What do you hope that uh, art collectors take away from your art? I protect that I'm always evolving, I'm always growing, but I value the integrity of my work. I value making sure that, you know, for those collectors who want to invest in the work for some type of return in the future, I'm protecting that, you know? I want them to know that the scale of my work is getting larger. I'm spending a lot more patience and more time with more detailed work. 
I want them to know that I value them because if it wasn't for them, I don't know how far I would have gotten. So there's this symbiotic relationship that I think we should keep going. But so many people just look past uh, what really makes a, a company work, yeah. whether it's on the end that we're on or the end that you're on. It all comes out to those collectors. Yeah. You know, we appreciate you 100 percent. Art is a, art is a luxury. Let's be honest. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's also cultural. It's also spiritual. People buy what they love. They buy what they like, but they don't have to. Right. The fact that these people are connected to the art world in that way, beyond the luxury, in tune with the cultural sensibility, the message, the aesthetics, the fact that people are that deep into it, the way we are deep into it as artists, shows that we, that we are a community of people. Who inspired you when you were starting out? Who do you most emulate? And then have you passed that knowledge on? And I'm asking, but I already know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but, uh, but you're, you're, a lot of your collectors don't know how connected you are. So, so it started with a brother named James Denmark. He's a collage artist. Yeah. James Denmark out of New York used to befriend me and he would take me to the studio and show me how he actually you know, made the paper and, 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 and developed the paper and collage his work. So he was one of my mentors that really, really more. Then it was Paul Goodnight. Paul Goodnight took me under his wing, another exceptional artist who would, you know, so, you know call me. Uh, sometime I would spend time with him and uh, they would show me, the, show me how they do work and encourage me. And then my work started to develop its own uh, language and its own uh, uh, style after I saw Romeo Bearden's work. You know, Romeo mm -hmm. Bearden, you know, his work being, he been him being a Southern, have a Southern roots and Northern uh, roots as well, parallel my life. So I, I really, really was motivated to, to, to reflect and express and embrace my Southern roots and my Northern roots and blend the two with my work. Oh, then wow. I met Jacob Lawrence personally okay. at Pratt University. When I saw Jacob Lawrence's work, he, his work gave my work a voice. His work allowed for me to work in series and tell stories. I come from a storytelling culture. And so after meeting with him, you know, it was really evident that this was, this was, this was my voice. This is who I am. So these artists were very instrumental and very impactful. And there were some other local artists like Willie Torbett and Verna Hart. They all took time to show me how to work with different mediums and they were, there's a lot of artists that was very giving, you know, mm. a lot of artists that wasn't afraid to share mm. and, and they, they weren't selfish. So mm. there's so many more names that I could mention, but those, uh -huh. those few were the most impactful. That's wonderful, yes. Leroy. That's, that's wonderful. Well, it's been great talking with you. Yes, it has. Thank you for taking time out of your busy day. Yeah, no doubt about it. You know, I had asked Patrice if she would leave the back door of your studio open. I had planned on coming <laughs> in there, grabbing me a piece and running out the front he door. He means but, it. He means yeah, it. Yeah, but uh, she wouldn't do it. So, so it was the back door because I had put I put this this uh, Doberman Pinscher on the front door. <laughs> you coming through the back? Yeah. Well, that's, thank, that's wonderful, Leroy. Thank you so much, Leroy. Peace, light, and love to all of you. Uh, knock it by, but definitely let's continue and I'll see you later. And we'll be right back. Welcome back to All About Art. That was a wonderful interview with Leroy Campbell. Yes, it was a great interview. But my favorite was the commercial. You think? Yeah, <laughs> because the art is speaking to me. This is um, a reminder of what Leroy shared with us, right? Ed Dwight, Sisters Ed. of Kilimanjaro. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Bye. Bye. <laughs>